Hi there! You're watching the Gardens and Graveyards channel. My name is Charisma and today we're meeting in the studio. So a, f a couple of weeks ago, um, 11 days ago, we planted some ranunculus corums and I will link that video below so you could see um, and the timestamp because we did a couple of projects on that day. But at the end of the video, we planted some, or pre-sprouted some ranunculus. And in this strawberry container, they have come up and it's time to go ahead and put them in their individual little containers that I will grow them in until I'm ready to put them out in the spring. Now, I grow on Oregon Coast in a zone 9A and it's plenty warm enough that I could put these out into the landscape. But I have never grown ranunculus before and any time that I see them come available in my area, they're already an established plant. My area doesn't get very warm for a very long time. So while we're temperate and we don't drop into the freezing temperatures, we also doesn't we also don't climb into the high 70s or 80s until late August and only for a couple of weeks. These are spring blooming flowers, but what I've been noticing when I watch other flower growers is they start blooming for them in like April, May. And for them, their temperatures are already hitting that 70 degrees. So if I want my plants to grow and get to blooming stage, I need to give them a really good head start. So today we're going to take these little tiny babies and we're going to put them into their own little plant containers. And they could just live in there until it is time to put them out in the landscape. I will probably put them out in like late March to mid April, somewhere in there, depending on how much rain we're getting in the spring. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix up a little bit of soil because these are going to be living under grow lights in my house. I do want to give them a little bit more um, drainage than just straight up potting soil. So I'm going to mix that up and fill these containers and then we'll get into the actual, the actual project and I'll show you what these look like up close. Um, I even have one that's got little leaves on it already. So it's, they're very happy. Okay. So this is just regular organic potting soil for indoor or outdoor use. Nothing extra special about it. And then this is Perlite. This is a Miracle Grow brand, but you can get any kind of Perlite that you get your hands on. And I'm just going to mix it up. Make sure it's all good and mixed. I don't have an exact recipe. I just go by how it looks and feels and what I know works best in my environment. And so what I really just look for is the white speckles in there and I want a pretty good ratio of white to brown. Maybe like, I would say like 30 to 40% um, perlite to soil. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and moisten it because those ranunculus are really tiny and I don't wanna drown them by watering them really good on top. So all I'm going to do is put some water in here. And mix mix up the soil. So 
So I want my soil to be pretty moist, but I don't want to be able to wring it out. So when I do this, I don't want any water dripping, but I do want it to sort of firm up and just stay firm in my hand. It, I mean, it's okay if it falls apart a little bit, but I don't want it just to totally, totally crumble without, you know, some assistance. So this is looking pretty good. And so I'm just gonna go ahead Make sure it's all mixed in there. Looks good. All right, so then we're just gonna go ahead. I know I had 12 corums, so I've got enough containers for that. Okay. gonna just go ahead and put these in right away. This will go underneath my grow lights. So you can see all the little sprouts in here. There's quite a few. They're tiny, but they're there. And so we're gonna gently remove each one and put them in their own container. I think the easiest way to do that is grab a little spoon and move this so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna come in here, grab the first one, and I just wanna see, it's got a really nice little root system, looks Fantastic. So then we're just going to make a little well and I'm actually going to bury the green tips uh, and that'll make it nice and strong. Some of them will be buried more than others depending on how big they are. Great root system. And that in there. You could also just fill the fill these up halfway, pop these in, and then fill the rest of them up. Just whatever is easiest for you. Okay. And so like this guy already has leaves, so I'm not gonna plant the leaf below the soil line. So I will leave that up, but I can bury it a little bit deep so that the stem is under the soil, just to give it plenty of um, stability. Okay, so like this one, barely has any kind of a shoot, but plenty of roots. So I am gonna put this one underneath the soil. And then just cover it up. And you need to be careful here. It's like hard to see them all. You can see this one, plenty of roots. here. It does have a little bit of root. It's not as established. There's some roots on this side, but not so much on this side. That might have been a moist, moisture water issue. It's okay. We'll get her in there and cover it up. Another one right here. Again, uh, 
not as not as strong but I'm confident it'll be fine okay so you don't forget I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little well in the ones that I haven't planted in yet So I have this one, it has a little bit of a green bit on it and it does have new uh, white roots. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one in, go on in there, totally cover it up, okay, put the neater ones here. We have four more. Okay, here's one here. This one's got a pretty nice root system, a couple of growth points. Looking good. Put it down in there, totally cover it up. Uh, there's another whoop, there's another one. Good growth system or three growth points. Good uh, roots. Down in there nice and deep. Okay. Um, some over here. Yeah. Should have two more in here. Just carefully coming through. Oh, this is one. This one I was curious about because it looked really tiny to begin with. There's actually a little bit of white and green growth right there. So I'm going to go ahead and plant it in and see what it does. Okay, then just one more somewhere. Oh, there it is. And this one looks pretty good too. So we'll just plant her in there. Oh, I am so happy and impressed. That's so awesome. All right. I don't think there was any others because I pretty sure I only had 12. So just double check. I haven't seen anything else in here. Uh, yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, that was exciting. Um, really simple, right? And then um, we'll label her, label all these. Uh, they are a mixed spring bouquet blend. So there was yellow and red and pink um, and maybe orange, I think, uh, just a variation of different colors. So we don't know which one's which. And you know what? These came uh, four corums to a package. So I bought three from the Dollar Tree and they all sprouted, which is just so exciting to me. And I think we're gonna have great success. So let's go ahead and get these uh, labeled and um, a little bit of water. I'm just gonna actually just water the tip tops, just sort of settle the soil because there's already quite a lot of moisture in there. Um, we're just gonna sort of settle, settle the uh, root balls. So I wanna make sure that the root balls uh, don't have any air pockets around them so they don't dry out, which could have happened with a couple of those already that I was seeing where the white um, new roots were really strong on one side but not the other. It's probably because there was a little dry soil um, unable to take up water. So give them their best shot right there. And then I'm going to find my labels and label them and we'll go ahead and put them under grow lights. They don't need grow lights right now because they're all underneath the soil, but as soon as they start coming up, they'll go under the grow lights. And currently I have my lights on for some baby um, African violets. And that's just like my seed starting station, my propagation station. So it's just easy for me to go ahead and put this tray underneath lights, even though they don't need lights right now. 
they will appreciate that little bit of gentle warmth that the lights put off. Label. Uh, just like I had just used some Sharpie right here and said what they were and what date I started the pre-sprout. On this label, I will put what they, oh, <laughs> what they are and the day that I planted them in these containers. So, and I'm only growing this one variety. So I don't need to worry about a variety name and I don't know what it is anyway. Uh, so I don't want to forget when I pre-sprouted. Since it's my first time, I want to make sure that I know exactly how long it took from pre-sprout to putting them out in the garden. So I'm just, I wrote pre-sprouted 118, four inch um, plant on 129. And then these trays will just stay by themselves. So I'm just gonna put it in one of the containers and that speaks for the whole tray and we'll put it where it's going to belong. Finish this up. Ooh, it's heavy. Okay, that's gonna do it for today's project. I hope that was inspiring. I've never grown ranunculus before. I'm excited to do it this year. And there are so many beautiful varieties. I, if this is successful, I cannot wait to start growing them from some more, um, you know, some growers that really know what they're doing. Like this is from the Dollar Tree. I'm sure the grower of those corms knew what they were doing. They packaged corms and seeds, I'm sure. Uh, but I don't even know what the brand was. I'll have to try to dig that out and find it again. Um, but I know Florette has some beautiful, beautiful ranunculus. I think Johnny Seeds has some really beautiful ones. I've seen some really dark purple ones that I really want to try and some white ones. Um, so I'm excited and I can't wait to see what they look like. And I will definitely share with you when that happens. But until the next video and the next time we're together, keep celebrating your life. Bye.